Hey everybody, Blades of God here from Hammer Bros Gaming, coming at you with the newest installment in our Gears Tactics, the Mortal Legion Achievement Guide. Today we're going to be bringing you Part 2 of the Act 3 Chapter 4 side missions. Normally we do all of these side missions in one lump video and kind of stick them all together, but as we're in the late game, the, the, the missions are becoming much longer, much more in-depth, and much more difficult. So after I'd edited the video together, I found out that it was going to be about an hour and a half worth of video to get through all three missions, so I decided to break it up. So this is part two. We're going to be going into a incursion mission called Freedom's Forge. Uh, and unlike the last mission, we are going to have a full complement of soldiers with us. So we get a full unit to work with, which is fantastic. If you're not familiar with the Immortal Legion achievement, uh, what it is is that it com the achievement tasks us with completing the entirety of the campaign from start to finish without losing a single unit in combat. We can dismiss our units from the caravan, caravan between missions if we need to free up some room for other soldiers or other recruits. Um, but... It does not count against us. The only thing that counts against us is if one of our units dies. If you lose a unit during a mission, don't worry. It's not the end of the world. We can restart from a checkpoint. We can restart the mission itself. We can even restart the entire act or chapter if we have to. But as long as you finish the last mission of the game without having lost any units in combat, the achievement should unlock and you should be good to go. If you're finding these guides helpful, if you find this guide series helpful, please consider liking the video, leaving a comment, letting us know how we helped you out, and maybe even consider subscribing to our channel, Hammer Bros Gaming. We would greatly appreciate it and it would really, really help us out. But that's enough yammering for me. Well, I'll stop talking so I can start talking again about the video and the guide. Stick around because I know that's what you're here for. Alright, so let's get right into it. As I said, we're going to be running Freedom's Forge, an incursion mission. And as I also said, we can run a full squad on this mission. We don't have to be limited to just one unit. So our first unit we're taking is Michaela, our lead sniper. For her skills, we have Epiphany, Weak Spot, Precision Shot Level 1, Fast Fingers Level 2, Ultimate Shot, Run and Gun, Chain Shot Level 2, Active Reload, Sharpshooter. Uh, these skills are very good for continuing to reload and keep our action pool full. Looking at her Long Shot, on the stock we have the Padded Stock for 50% crit damage. We have the Sleek Bolt, which is rare for a plus 7% crit chance. We have the Legendary Precision Scope for 15% accuracy and 10% crit chance. So much better than the epic precision scope, precision scope that we got in the last mission. We have the Threaded Barrel equipped for the high ground skill, which is the epic version. 40% uh, critical hit chance when we're shooting from above our target. Uh, there is a chance that we could swap the Rat Barrel for a straight 40, a plus 40 damage boost. But a critical hit means double damage and at almost a 50% chance for that critical hit. Uh, it's, it's really worthwhile to have that on there. She is running the rare snub pistol with plus 30 damage and plus 7% accuracy. She has the default frag grenades. For her armor, she's wearing the Onyx Retro Helm for plus 7 evasion and the advanced optics, which unit gets 30% critical hit damage. Her chest rig is the cadet chest plate with plus 30 health and more importantly stabilizers. Shots while in cover get a plus 7% accuracy. And then looking at her legs or her, uh, her straps, she has Onyx Greaves for plus 7% evasion and double down. So what Double Down does is after this unit takes a shot, it gets plus 7 damage for the turn, um, and the effect stacks up to 3 times, meaning you can get up to an additional 21% damage. So as you can see, we really focus on critical hit damage, critical hit chance, and increasing her damage as much as possible. Uh, Michaela is going to be the only hero that we take into this mission. We're going to save Gabe and Sid for the last of the side missions that we have to do. So we're going to kind of build our team around Michaela. First, we're going to take Alejandro Sunshine Nail, Looking at his skills, we have Surge, High Power Shot Level 2, Distracting Fire, Weak Point, and Power Level level 1, and Command. Um, looking at his Lancer, we have the Sleek Stock with a plus, the Rare Sleek Stock with plus 7% crit chance. We have the Expert Mag for plus 5 accuracy and plus 1 ammo. Precision Scope for plus 5 accuracy bonus. Uh, and I'm just going to take a quick look here and see if there's anything else that I can swap to. And I do see that I have a Precision Scope, which I can swap with Edward, who's a lower level support class, so we're going to swap that. He does have the Common Power Barrel equipped, which is just, you know, we, we can do better than that. I mean, we have the Legendary Impact Barrel right here, which is going to be going to Gabe, and I really don't want to use it because Gabe will need it for the next, uh, the next mission. But there's nothing really better, so I'm going to stick with that plus 15% damage. I have a bit of a brainstorm, so I go back to the stock, and I actually do swap stocks with Gabe. And I'm going to go and go to Gabe right now and give him that legendary barrel. That way I don't end up accidentally giving it to another unit and then Gabe not being able to use it when I need him to have it in the next mission. 
So we're going to give Gabe that legendary impact barrel. And then we're going to go back and uh, look, go back into the mission. I actually went back one screen too far. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the rest of Alejandro's equipment. He has the common snub. He has the default frags. Looking at his helmet, he has currently the common onyx helm for plus three evasion and the optic skill. Uh, and again, here I am just checking to see if there's anything better. Uh, and I've run this unit before and it's worked very well. So I'm just trying to make sure that there isn't anything really better I can use. He has the common commando vest. And again, just checking, seeing if there is a rare... Uh, commando vest that he could use but again not seeing that there is any I go ahead and move on to his braces he does have the epic epic hunter braces for 10% evasion and the glory skill so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run this unit he's only level four so he's a little under leveled but not the end of the world he's proven himself in past missions so we'll run with him again like I said since we don't have the other two heroes to use right now I have to be very particular about who I take with me and what I'm thinking about is who's going to give me the most versatility and the most DPS. So obviously the heavy um, would be very useful as laying down cover fire. But honestly, I find that using snipers really gives you a better chance at having higher damage, more consistent damage without missing. So all I'm doing right now is I'm seeing if there's anybody that I could recruit who might have uh, a higher level, better skills. But I'm not really seeing anything here that catches my eye. So I'm going to go back to the roster and my third selection is going to be... Diana Buddy Pickin Pickney? Pick I believe it's Pick Pinicky. Pinicky? I don't know how to pronounce the name, but after looking over the rest of my units that I have available, I am gonna end up going with Diana. Um, she's a sniper that I've used before. I've also used Grady Ogre Ladette as a sniper, but because Diana has a higher level, hoping that a higher level means that she's going to have better skills and better equipment. So let's take a look at her long shot. She has the rare padded stock for 40% crit damage, which is fine. She has the rare sleep bolt for 7% crit chance, also fine. Rare holographic scope for the focus skill. I'm going to give her the epic precision uh, scope. And I'm going to give her the epic wrap barrel. That's going to make her more accurate and deal more damage. She has the common snub pistol. She has the standard frag, so I'm not even going to show those. Uh, she has the epic onyx helm, onyx helm for 7% evasion and the optic skill. Uh, she does have on the chest rig, she has the hunter shell, oh, I'm sorry, the cadet chest plate with the stabilizer skill, so shots and cover get 5% accuracy, which is absolutely fine. Uh, I misclick there, I don't really care about changing the colors. And then for her legs, we have the ranger treads for one movement and plus 5 evasion. And I'm just seeing if there's anything that I can give her that'll actually increase her damage. So I go with the onyx greaves and the double down skill, because again, that double down skill when you take multiple shots per turn is great. Looking at her skills, we have Spree, we have Epiphany, we have Lucky Streak, we have First Blood level 3, so shots the target with full health, the shot gets a 100% damage bonus. Weak Spot, Precision Shot level 1, and Sharpshooter. So not my normal build, but I'm not going to actually use a token to re-spec her skills. Uh, it just doesn't seem necessary, we're just going to run with it. Uh, and then finally, we're going to look and see who my fourth choice is going to be. I do waffle a little bit on this, because I'm not sure if I want to bring... A third sniper but I felt like that was gonna limit me too much in what I can do I really want to bring my heavy because he does do a lot in the way of suppressive fire and overwatch cones um, but there is something to be said as well about the scout and the scouts ability to both ghost and use frag grenades and proximity mines uh, so I end up waffling a little bit here and originally I was gonna go with uh, Damiano hunter key and you can see I'm kind of pausing I'm thinking about it considering it and I say, nope, we're not doing that. We're going to actually go with the heavy. We're going to select Mike Hothead Alt. Um, after just a moment here. There it is. So we're going to go with Mike. And um, again, like I said, it's because of that Overwatch shot. It's because they're very tanky. Uh, and let's go ahead and take a look at his skills. He has Heat Up Level 1. He has Catalyst. He has Streak. Refreshing Reload in Fury. Redeploy Level 1. Enhanced Anchor, Reckless Shot level 1, and Anchor. So a pretty good skill set. Again, not my normal skill tree, but uh, we'll make it work. Looking at his Mulcher, he has the Rare Power Handle for plus 30 damage. He has the Epic Radial Mag for the High Ground skill. Again, be uh, better shot for a critical chance when shooting from above. Legendary Precision Adapters for 15% accuracy. And the Impact Barrel with 20 damage and the Disrupt skill. So that's a very, very important setup. Um... Are a very good setup. It's not important. I don't know why I said that. 
but it's a very decent setup. You can see I really want to put the uh, shielded adapters, which lowers my movement range, but it increases 100% crit damage. So that's a huge, huge bonus to your critical damage. And because I have that high ground uh, skill active on my magazine, as long as I can get above my opponents, I'm going to do a lot of damage if I hit critical hits. So going back and looking at the rest of his gear, he does have the common snub pistol equipped. He has the standard frags. I'm not going to show that. He has the rare onyx helm for 5% evasion and the optic skill for 5% critical hit chance. On his chest rig, he's running the destroyer vest with untraceable and 20 health. Uh, you can see I'm just, again, searching to see if there's anything I like better that gives me a better chance at hitting critical hits. Um, there's really not a whole lot at this point, so I'm just going to go ahead and stick with what I had equipped. And just taking my time, not wanting to rush through this. Like I said, it is getting to be the end game, so the skills and the builds that you use do make quite a bit of difference. And All Out is a decent skill because as long as you don't get hit, you're increasing your damage even further. And on this difficulty, if you get hit, generally you die anyway, so you might as well take the extra damage. So I go with the all-out skill. He's got the trooper boots equipped with self-repair. Um, it's not a great skill because, like I just said, if you get hit, you usually die. So again, I'm looking to see if there's something else. Magazine exten extension is never a bad thing. Plus one movement range and 7% evasion on the ranger treads would cancel out the movement loss on the mulcher for the shielded. Uh, I can't remember what it was but the thing that increased my uh, critical hit damage. So there's a few options here that I could go with. Again, magazine extension is always good. Double down is always decent, especially when you do a lot of shooting. Um, and it's just trying to build the most effective or versatile unit that you can. You could always go with utility belt because having more grenades is never a bad thing either. And Ultimately here, we're going to end up looking, I think, at the Ranger Treads because of that movement range. Um, it's one of those things that you want to cancel out your negatives when it comes to some of your abilities. And if I'm going to give him the Ranger Treads, I might as well give him the Epic Ranger Treads. So I'm actually going to be at a net plus half meter movement and 10% evasion. So that's going to work out really well for me. And that gives you a full rundown of the squad of Mike Hothead Alt's skills and weapons. And it shows you everybody that I'm going to use. So you can see the modifier. Your units cannot use disabling shot. My optional objective deploy one or more snipers, which I'm actually deploying two. So we're all set there. And here we go. We're going to get into the Freedom's Forge mission. Uh, as I said at the intro to the vid or in the intro to the video, there's really nothing unique about this other than the layout of the map. It's a normal incursion or sabotage where you have to get to the gate, which is usually your halfway point. Um, Though I will say, on this mission, the, ha the first half is much, much easier. I struggled mightily with this map, and I did have to restart many, many times. So, you've probably seen this layout before, you've probably seen this map before. Uh, usually I like to go off to the right and try to fight my way up the hill, because the enemies are normally stacked up on the left near the door. However, this time I found that most of the enemies were on the right. So I'm going to send all my units to the left and I'm going to take advantage of this ladder that leads to the higher ground. There's two reasons for this. There's no way the enemies are going to be able to circle around and get behind me. You can see there's one enemy right there who's out of the fog of war. So I'm going to stack up all my units right here as best I can so they have good cover. They're not going to be exposed to fire from above. You can see that uh, Michaela, she's going to stay a little further back because she has better movement range. And again, she can't really get into cover on that. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to wrap the turn. The, yeah, wrap this turn up. Uh, you can see again, I'm just trying to see if I can get maybe around something or hide behind something. But I don't have many options here. So we're going to go ahead and cancel it. We're going to end our turn, see where the enemies go. Again, our ultimate goal is we're going to go up that ladder that you see right on the screen there. All the enemies are moving around off screen right now, except for these couple who are moving into screen, which is fine. Um, and like I said, there's two reasons I want to see to go up here, uh, up that ladder. If the enemies decide to go down the ladder and engage down bottom, I can get my units who have the high ground skill up the ladder. That's going to put me on the high ground and increase my damage shooting down at them. And like I said too, all the enemies are going to come from one direction, which means that I can set up fields of fire and I can set up overwatch cones that are going to prevent anything from really getting close. 
and that's really really good you want to keep your enemies back and away from you that way your chance of getting hit is lessened and it uh, really is going to give my snipers a chance to go to work taking shots and hopefully keeping the enemy at bay so as i was explaining that you see i moved all my units up here i have all four of my units up at the top of this wall embankment i guess i don't really know what you would want to call it but i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to use uh, mike hothead alt grenade and i was going to try to get it tossed over that piece of cover but unfortunately it just I, I wouldn't have been able to get the kill and i wanted to save the grenade for a potentially clutch moment when i might need it later so instead all i do because i have the interrupt skill on the barrel i overwatch that piece of cover where i know there was a drone hiding and i just wait for him to come out that stops him from advancing keeps my units in the clear Unfortunately, you did see a drone manage to get up close and overwatch Mike, but that's just fine because I have plenty of units who are going to be able to take that uh, that drone out of commission. We had a few wretches move up, but we are actually in really good shape right now. So, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use a grenade, and Alejandro is going to knock this drone out of his overwatch. That's going to free up both Mike and I believe Michaela to move and act. Uh, my other sniper, Dana, Diana is now available and by moving there you can see all the fields of fire she has on those enemies look at all those lines moving out i moved michaela over as well and now we're going to go to work with chain shot and fast fingers so chain shot hits and gets me a kill so that gives me two more action points plus i had the double deal, double down skill activate which gave me plus seven percent more damage uh, we're going to use heat up with mike so heat it up to plus 25 percent damage and we're going to start going to work with him. It's only a 66% hit chance, and I'm just checking to see who I have the highest chance on. I really want to take this drone off the map, but unfortunately it was only a partial hit. So he ended up getting downed, but not dead, which is, that's fine. Um, and the, you can see the heat up skill working. Another partial hit on the drone knocks him back. I fire again, but he's still on his feet. So let's fire again, and there. Now that wretch is out of commission. Plus, I got the anchored skill going, so Mike is building up a lot of damage and uh, damage resistance by standing there. Back to Michaela, we're going to use her rifle, we're going to take down another wretch. The cooldown, uh, the epiphany skill just activated, so that's good. Plus, we pulled off a headshot, and with the fast finger skill, I put both the active reload bonus, and since fast fingers is at level 2, I got an additional action point and a full uh, mag of ammo. Another shot, another kill, Epiphany activated again, so Michaela's skills are going to be cooled down quite well. Moving over to Diana, Di Dana, Diana, I don't know, I'm probably butchering the pronunciations. Buddy, we're moving over to the other sniper, Buddy. We're going to start shooting. She's not as accurate as Michaela is, but you know what, that's okay. She used her last shot, wasn't able to accomplish a whole lot, and then we're going to move over to Alejandro, and he has two action points available. I was considering using Surge and uh, Empower on Michaela, but... That would have given me a lot more options to uh, go back to work with fast fingers and chain shot but i had pushed the enemy so far back by wiping them out that i wanted the enemies to actually move up a little bit because i'm in a very safe location right now the enemies have to move to me in order to hit me and right here is why i saved um mike's grenade because something like this i don't know if i could have hit that drone with my gun but i know that i could hit him with a grenade so you can see the streak skills activated I'm going to go back to work with my Mulcher, I'm going to reload, unfortunately it's only going to leave me with one, uh, one action point, but that's okay, because again, I've done a pretty good job of keeping a lot of these enemies at bay, and I could take a chance and shoot at this BBNO enemy, and I'm going to do that because I really don't want him getting back on his feet. So Mike's action points are now completely spent, I have Michaela, I have Buddy, and I have Alejandro who are still available. Uh, I decided to take a very, very low probability shot and the first time it missed but the second time it didn't so that's another drone off the board thanks to Michaela. epiphany you see just activated again uh active reload act happened so i have the double down and the active reload bonus so 25 and 7 that's what 32 percent more damage so we're doing really well here enemies are uh, coming at us in ones and twos we're able to pick them off and you can see i had plenty of action points on the table still but I'm not in any rush. I'm taking my time. I'm letting the enemies come to me. I set up an overwatch cone. One enemy just ran right into it. So now you can see we got a grenadier on the field and a couple of drones. Those grenadiers can be difficult. I've talked about them before in other missions. Their ability to really 
tank a lot of damage, can be very scary. So the trick is you want to isolate them, activate their rage mode that reduces or eliminates, I should say, their reflex ability, and then take them out with a retro lancer or a lancer that is a one-shot kill. Uh, when you use either the bayonet charge or the chainsaw. Unfortunately, I really don't have that option because I can't get Alejandro up close enough. So I'm trying to use Precision Shot, and I'm, what I'm going to do is just try to go to town doing as much damage as I can to that Grenadier. Thankfully, I got a critical hit with Michaela, and that did put him in the DBNO status. And I'm just going to try to clean him up with Mike, and I'm able to. So that Grenadier is off the board. Mike's at a 4 out of 5 streak, so he's doing really well. Um, and I'm considering using Redeploy to try to move over to where, to, where Michaela is and get my Overwatch Cone, uh, a, a more effective Overwatch Cone, I should say. So I'm going to actually scooch over, I'm going to get my overwatch up. Because I used redeploy, I got additional action points to move, so I'm going to reload. And after moving and reloading, I have two action points left, and that's, uh, that's going to be pretty much where Mike stays. I'm going to move Diana up, and again, because the enemies are taking so long to come back, there's another DBNO enemy right there. Uh, I use Diana to take him off the board as well. And now we're going to move Alejandro up. He's going to go right where Mike was, actually. And because he's playing more of a support role, he's not being super offensive. I don't mind if he hangs back a little bit because he's going to buff my allies. So we're looking good. There's no enemies in the out of the Fog of War right now, so I'm wondering how many opponents are still left on the field. I'm going to move Alejandro up. I still don't see any opponents, so I'm starting to wonder if maybe they're all dead. Um, I know that's wishful thinking because this is insane. So this is insane difficulty. Um, so there's no way they're all dead already. That's just that's just not going to happen. So I'm moving my characters up, my yeah units up very very cautiously. You can see I just keep double checking to see who's where. I might as well reload because well why not? And uh, yeah, there's no one to be seen right now, and I don't really have a better place to put Mike. So I'm going to leave him right there, and I'm hoping the enemy moves up. Again, they don't, so we're just going to continue to sort of leapfrog up over each other to see if we can get some fog of war to dissipate and see if we can get uh, some enemies to pop up on the screen. And this is slow going. You don't want to overextend yourself because if you do, then you run the risk of, you know, two or three enemies queuing on you at one time, and then the next thing you know, you are basically going to be knocked out of commission. Um, even if it's just wretches or, you know, tickers, God forbid. It doesn't take much on insane difficulty to put you, well, you can't go DBNO. If you go DBNO, you're dead. So it doesn't take much for that to happen. And then finally, we find it. There's a, a Theron guard who had gone all the way down and around. And thankfully, he missed Michaela. However, less fortunately, Alejandro happened to be just at the right place where the errant torque bow shot managed to hit him. So he took the damage that Michaela missed. But, now you can see I got 100% hit chance, 100% critical hit chance. I'm in a really good spot with Michaela to take this Theron off the board. So, that's what we're going to do. I reload, I got another 100% hit chance, and there it is. That was the last enemy that we were looking for. So, now our objective is to get up to the gate. Uh, the battlefield is clear, there's no enemies detected. I'm going to grab this case because, again, it never hurts to have extra kit and extra equipment available. Uh, you can see I'm just scanning the map to see if there's any other cases in the first half of this map, and there really doesn't look like there is. So, at this point, we are good to move up to the door. You can see that all of our units are fairly close to the door already. Uh, something you can do here to help set yourself up for the second half of the map is you can burn one turn and let some of the skills recharge or the grenades recharge. Uh, don't waste too much time though between eliminating your last enemy and opening that door. If you do, the game will actually drop in a couple of boomers right on top of you via reaver. And it's happened to me before because on lower difficulties I like to just sit here and burn through turns to make sure all of my skills are back up. I have time to reload. Uh, basically I'm starting with a fresh, you know, full fresh team. Uh, on insane though, it's happened to me where I've had boomers drop in directly on top of me, and even with a team of four heroes with good equipment, trying to take out two boomers in one turn is almost impossible. Um, so just save yourself the headache, get the gate open. Once the gate is open, 
you can still hang out on the, this side of the gate and shoot through the doorway without having to worry about the game dropping anything behind you. Uh, but you can see that we've got quite a few enemies to deal with here. There's that little landing pad looking thing uh, that is sort of the part one part of the central building in the second half of the map. Uh, and the big concern here, believe it or not, is Theron guards. There are two Theron who have torque bows and you do not want to run out and expose yourself because they are going to kill you very quickly. Uh, so what I like to do is I'm going to have my sniper, at least Michaela, set up in the door and hopefully start picking off some of these some of these enemies uh, and thin the herd just a little bit. Mike is going to run up to the left. We're trying to get him on the high ground because he has that high ground skill. And Alejandro is basically going to stay back. He already has taken damage. He really can't afford to get hit anymore. Um, and I wasn't playing this very smart. I probably should have had Alejandro stay where... Uh, Diana is right now and put Diana where Alejandro is that way I could have had both of my snipers working angles through the door but it was what it was like I said I had to restart this mission or restart checkpoint multiple multiple times before I was able to complete it so I was getting frustrated I think I might have been even in the double digits on this map trying to get through it uh, so I do apologize that my strategy is a little bit more oh, I don't know, reckless um, when I finally do complete it. But like I said, I've been stuck here for a little while, so I finally was able to find a strategy that worked, and hopefully you're going to be able to emulate this. So you can see that we have a drone who's overwatching us. I'm going to use one skill point, to, or one action point, I'm sorry, to move Alejandro up, and then I'm going to use his grenade to basically knock this drone out of his overwatch. He's interrupted, and now I'm going to just move Alejandro into cover right here, Again, we're being a little more aggressive. You definitely could have sat back and picked away at the enemies with your snipers. Uh, but my hope, my plan was that I was going to be able to be aggressive with Alejandro and with Mike and then use the snipers to sort of clean up as I pushed forward. So you can see I'm moving Buddy up, Diana Buddy, Pinnikini. I, I really can't pronounce that name. And I'm trying to clean up the drone that we just uh, we fragged but that's not working so we're gonna skip over to Mike and you can see I don't have the high ground right now and in fact I'm way out in the open and my first shot was a complete whiff I missed totally and my second shot managed to hit so he's dead this is just a Hail Mary I mean I'm a 10% chance to hit this guy there's no chance uh, I managed to get a partial hit and it knocks him down but I don't really have anything better to do right now with a 0% hit chance I have one um, action point and the reason I was shooting was because I was anchored I had increased damage and increased defense so I figured why not I'll take my chance and see if I can do some damage and I did so I put Mike in cover and now it's a bit of a clutch moment because I need to get this drone off the board both Alejandro and Mike are exposed to fire from him so it's very very risky uh, that I get him or very very essential I get him off the board in order to do this I used my chain shot skill on the highest hit highest potential hit which was that wretch and that gave Michaela two more skill points so I could use a frag grenade and this is gonna take that drone off the map that cleans up a lot of fields of fire I do have wretches who are advancing on me but I'm fairly safe uh, fairly confident that they're not gonna be able to get to me this drone, I don't know what he's doing. He could have done that a lot easier without having to like crawl around that wall, but whatever. Let him do what he wants to do, I guess. Um, so now that they're on guards are starting to call out targets, you see the wretches are advancing. That's not a bad thing because it's going to make them easier to get or get at. Uh, the big thing is you want those Theron guards to stay behind this building for as long as possible. The reason that is, is that you want to be able to set up an ambush on them when they come around or come over the top. And you can see we have drones who are advancing to the top of this building, which is not ideal. We have overwatch cones set up, which again, not a big deal because the, uh, the enemy is not close enough for the overwatch to really hit me. But here we go. We now have a Theron who's moved up. And of course, he's going to try to shoot us. But thankfully, the AI was foolish and it shot its own unit in the back. So that just worked out so good because now I have my snipers who are who have lines of sight on all these enemies most importantly is the Theron guard and I got a hundred percent hit chance so I'm gonna take that 
make sure I get him off the board immediately, because I really need to make sure that these Theron don't hit me with their Torque Bow. So, there goes one. That's perfect. That's wonderful. Now I'm going to use Ultimate Shot. I get 100% crit chance. Um, I'm sorry, not Ultimate Shot. I'm going to use uh, Chain Shot. Uh, is it Chain Shot? No, Fast Fingers, and that's going to reload. So I gained one action point for the Fast Fingers skill, plus I got the damage boost. Now I'm going to use Ultimate Shot, which is going to refill all of my action points. Uh, and now, again, I can continue to go to work. I've got 92% hit chance on the drone, which looks like that's going to take him off the board. 13 health is what he's left with. But we're going to make sure that we, uh, we fix that. So he's dead. We needed to make sure he was off the board completely. Chain Shot gave me two additional action points. So now I'm able to reload another active reload bonus. So I'm just stacking damage on top of damage. Plus, I got a critical hit on that wretch. He didn't stand a chance. And Epiphany is cooling down my skills as... I get these kills, so that's working out really well. There's only four enemies remaining. This went really well up to this point because of that Theron shooting his own unit. Um, I've, I've gotten to that point multiple times, but I'd never seen the Theron hit his own guy with his Torque Bow. So it worked out really well this time, and I was very, very excited. You could see like my the movements on the screen became a lot more... I don't want to say jerry, but like a lot more fast-paced. I wasn't being nearly as... Pre, uh, preoccupied with safety and caution but back into what we're actually doing on the screen what I'm trying to do is get my units into a safe place so I can get fire up on that building when the locust and hopefully the Theron eventually come to try to get uh, some angles on me and you can see there we go I'm gonna use my overwatch cone from Mike to guard that ladder hoping that the AI is gonna bring them down the path of least resistance so to speak or the most direct route and get them from where they are to where they need to be as fast as possible and you can see I'm gonna end my turn even though uh, Diana had skill or action points left uh, unfortunately he the drone does move over he didn't go where I thought he was gonna do so I was able to interrupt him and he just overwatches that ladder probably the AI is planning the same thing thinking we're gonna come up to them uh, and now the Theron comes up and I hit him once and then I hit him twice but it wasn't enough to actually down him or interrupt him he fires his torque bow but it's only a partial shot and I'm in half cover so I get a 20% damage reduction and thankfully he targeted the heavy he was the tankiest unit I had so we're still on our feet we're still good and now opportunity is sort of knocking because I have the chance to take this other Theron off the board altogether and that is the definitely the biggest threat so you can see I'm checking my different units, seeing who has uh, the best hit chances, who has the best chance of taking this guy down. I got 100% hit chance right there, so we're going to take it. And what do you know, we got a critical hit, and he's down but not out, which is just, it's fantastic. I was so overjoyed at this point that both of Theron were down. Um, but of course, there's always a chance that he can get revived. So we're going to deal with that possibility, or that, I don't want to say eventuality, but that chance right now. Uh, we're going to move Mike up, and you can see that I see his frag grenade is ready to go. And I'm checking to see if moving over here is going to trigger the drone's overwatch. I don't see the red warning indicator, so I chance it, and it looks like we're safe. So here comes the frag grenade. We're going to take both, we're trying to take both the drone and the Theron off the map, but it, and it looks like we're going to be able to just by placing that grenade in the right spot. There it they go. We're down to two enemies left. And we're doing okay. Uh, Mike is a little damaged. Alejandro is very damaged. But we only get two enemies left. They're both drones. And now it's sort of a waiting game to see who's going to show uh, like show their hand first. Who's going to come out of cover and give us a chance to, uh, to shoot. So we're going to move Michaela over here. She's going to get the run and gun 50% damage boost. She has one shot left. It's got 100% hit chance. So, yeah, you know what? We're going to not only take that shot, but we're going to use, uh, well, I'm considering using Fast Fingers, but I don't think that I have a good enough crit chance that I'm wondering if I should waste it. I decide not to. We get the crit, and it kills the drone, so we're down to one enemy, and sometimes when you get to one enemy left, they do the stupid little stutter step where they take two or three steps, and then they stop, and that ends their turn. They're just waiting for you to get close. So I was anticipating that happening. I was moving my units up, thinking that this drone isn't going to do anything. He's just going to wait behind this building for me to come get him. Um, and you can see he, did, he didn't even move that time. So I'm a little nervous because I've got two units here who are damaged. 
uh, and I'm trying to figure out what my best move is. And I determined that my best move is to first have Alejandro come up and get that case, because again, we want those cases, and then to have Mike come up and grab this Torque Bow. Now, neither of these two units have their frag grenades ready, but I now have a Torque Bow with Mike, and Mike has two action points left. So, if I can drop that Torque Bow in just the right spot, I'm not going to be able to get a one-shot kill with it, but I should. I saw a sweet spot where it did like 90% damage, and I'm just trying to find that very carefully right there. So if I can get two shots with this Torque Bow, there's one. And now the Sniper... Yeah, that is a Sniper. The sniper's going to get hit with a second Torque Bow shot. There's two. And there's that cutscene that makes you know that you got the kill. And that's it. We cleaned up all the enemies. We made it through the mission. We're going to gather up the goodies out of that crate. And that is the end of the mission, guys. Like I said, this was probably up to this point the single biggest stumbling block I've had on this insane run. Um, and that's including bosses and everything. So don't be surprised if in these later, this later part of the game you run into these problems. Uh, you can see we got the epic power handle for the Mulcher, which is fantastic, and we're going to pop open these cases and show you the goodies that we got, but that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Stick around, we're going to have more videos coming down the line, uh, but until next time, take care of yourselves, and we'll see you around. Bye bye Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please like and subscribe. You can also check us out on Twitch at Hammer Bros Gaming. I am Blades of God, and until next time, have a great day everyone.